Hi guys and welcome back to Scribe Gaming. I'm your man Scribe and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Alrighty, so there is another galactic challenge and you know what the deal is guys, I'm here to help you get the best rewards you possibly can. Let's get into it. Okay, so we are on Tatooine and we're going up against the Rebels, in particular Mon Mothma Rebels. Now these guys are obviously going to do a lot of damage attacking out of turn, generating a lot of turn meter. You've got Bistan there giving himself bonus turns with Frenzy, you've got Pow there generating, what, 40% TM every time he uses his Sakala. Okay, <clears throat> and obviously they'll be able to summon an additional unit. So we've got the Dune Sandstorm Global Modifier today, which means there's going to be a lot of dots landing on the board. We've got the Mandalorian Code ability, which means, you know, if we're using at least four Mandalorians in the leadership at least as well, then one non-Mandalorian will be able to get that clan loyalty with the counter-attacks and the additional protection. Um, and the enemies have the, the odds whenever a rebel ally scores a critical hit during their turn, they have a 100% chance to attack again, so they're going to be attacking time after 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 time, time ad memorial. Alright, so feats, we've got complete the battle, no problem. Complete the battle with at least four of your Mandalorian units. This is nice because you don't necessarily need to have a full squad of Mandos. Opportunistic advance, complete after attacking out a turn for 20 times or uh, 20 or more times, and then complete the battle after scoring 30 critical hits. Now, <clears throat> these opportunistic, opportunistic advance and lucky shot, obviously those two will be very easy to do with like a full rebel squad. You know me guys, I love my rebels. Why not jump in and give that one a go? We'll go rebel, 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 rebel. I'm trying to think. With the shoots first, we should probably be going after someone like Pow because he's the one that feeds the turn meter. Stun him. And then we'll just play the control game over here. We'll just make sure they don't get any turns. Let's pass this over to uh, our good boy Han Solo. Let's blind some of these fools and stun this fool. Brilliant. Brilliamente. Let's get those crit chance up. We need to get those crits in. And let's go ahead and do a big batter bop. We'll kill a couple of these fools. And we'll kill him. And will we finish him off? No turns for the enemy team. I imagine that has given us all the uh, bonus attacks. Attacks out of turns, critical hits that we needed. But let's have a look. Boom, bada boom, bada boom. Complete the battle. We didn't get the, we did not get the critical hits. That's a shame. Okay, so alternatively, guys, we could probably try something like our own Mon Mothma team. Mirror matches will probably still be able to get those, you know, crits, those attacks out of turn. We've just got to be smart in the way we do it. We'll start off by removing TM. And then we are just going to look to build up that TM train, um, get as many dots and attacks on these guys as possible, try and kill them. Uh, Mon Mothma can only revive one unit at a time. <coughs> one unit at a time. So we might as well try and take advantage of that and do all the damage we possibly can. Let's bring in our additional unit, giving ourselves a numbers advantage right now. And then just get as much TM as we possibly can. Not letting them take a turn is always nice. Obviously, Biggs is going to be the issue here, because Biggs, whenever we get our attacks in, he's going to be generating TM when we crit, which is not really ideal, but we'll make do. We'll make do. So, Wedge is nearly dead. I'm going to save that heal, because that heal is also our revive. We want both of those. We want to be able to heal, we want to be able to revive. Let's not let these guys get anything done. Sakala. Mon Mothma is nearly going to take a turn there. She's going to use her revive as her first turn. And that's okay though, because we might potentially be able to kill this POW before she gets that revive off. It's also going to heal their team, which is not what we want to happen, obviously. But yeah, she's going to get the turn now. Oh, she summoned the unit instead. I thought she was going to get the revive. I thought the revive would have made more sense there, but I guess she didn't want to do that. All right, let's pull back the TM. Work on Bistan. I want to leave Biggs until last, just because of all his TM generation. I'm actually going to kill the Ad before I kill Biggs. Again, we don't need to use this heal, so I'm not going to waste it. 
I would rather keep that to make sure it's available off cooldown just in case she kills one of my units. Get this stun over here. That stun will also be very useful to place on Biggs to make sure he can't attack after we stun him. Let's get that additional turn in. Okay, cool. So again, I don't need to use this stun at all. Uh, yeah, let's play it like this. I should remove the TM. Oh, of course, but all the mass assists. He's going to get the assist in now. Okay, so let's just focus on the Rebel Trooper. Let's try and take him out. I mean, the AoEs from Cara Dune are actually hurting Mon Mothma as well, which is interesting. Obviously, guys, this is a very slow-paced one, and you do kind of have to have the right team for it. Um, and I imagine there are easier options than this. We're just using this one as a for instance. As a for instance, in case you happen to have it. Ooh, he actually... D oh, we got the daze on him there. The daze is really handy, and then Mon Mothma cleansed it straight away. <laughs> she has 28 dots on her. That's pretty brutal. We'll eventually kill this uh, rebel trooper. That's tempting. Let's do that. I was hoping to land the defense down there, but no such luck. Again, we don't need to use that heal. Let's just keep it in our back pocket for now. Pull back the TM. I was really hoping it would have pulled back the TM on Mon Mothma there. Her next move should be to revive. I don't think these dots are going to kill Mon Mothma. So, um, let's see what she does. I'm going to try and generate as much TM as I can. There we go. He's gone. All right. That evasion up coming in handy for him. We do obviously cleanse it. Oh, there goes Mon Mothma. We can put this on order now. <laughs> Without Mon Mothma, they've got no means to revive. So, um, oh, we've got the days on him as well. There's the days. No bonus TM for him. And there we go. So that will have given us the attacks out of turn and the crits for certain. The amount of attacks we did there, guys, it must have done it. Yeah, there's the 30 critical hits. There's the attack out of turn. So you can do it with that sort of team. I'm fairly certain you'll also be able to do it with um, um, with rebels as well. You just have to maybe don't do what I do and overkill it completely. Let's actually let's actually go back and check. Let's go back and check if we are to use rebels like this again. Let's look at it from a perspective of. Let's try not to just completely annihilate everybody. Let's try and let them have a turn. Try and let them get something done. See, what I do want to do is to kill at least one person. It's done. And I'm just going to focus on one person, so she'll get the revive. That's fantastic. Keeps them alive just a little bit longer. Just a basic. Just a basic. Okay, great. The dodge is actually great. Let's see. Did that that must have got the attacks out of turn, probably not the crits though. Yeah, okay. <coughs> 30 crits and 20 attacks out of turn. So you can do it, just don't go absolutely ham on <laughs> on uh, on the offense. Okay, so this last one is where the trouble is going to be, and it's probably going to take me a couple of attempts to figure out a sort of free-to-play friendly way of doing it. Completing the battle against at least four, well, with, with at least four Mandalorian units. Now, that last one, you can use whatever you want. Obviously, if you've got a GL, it's probably going to be a piece of cake. So I'll do it, for instance, using Ray as a leadership here. And then we'll just throw in any old Mandalorians. And let's take a look and see 
how this goes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't imagine it would be crazy difficult. Let's see if we can keep Armorer alive just so that she can um, try and get that triple stack of armor on our Ray over here. That would make our Ray pretty much unkillable, I think. Obviously, we're not going to get the clan loyalty buff, but that's okay. I'm going to keep putting lifeblood on uh, armor here just to try and get um, get her at that three stacks and land the um, land the armor ability. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Okay, so cool. Now, those of you who don't know, guys, if you use whirlwind, enemies can't be revived from it. Okay. Um, enemies defeated by this ability cannot be revived. So we're just going to use it straight away, take out Pow, just because he gives a bit of TM. We've got the damage immunity here. Nearly got a turn going here. If they keep focus on our Ray, that's perfect. Ooh. Okay, there we go. So we've got the triple stacks of Beskar armor. Doesn't matter that she's dead now. So we gain 50% de uh, defense, 15% max health, which is great for Ray, obviously. We recover 30% protection. She doesn't have a whole lot of protection, so that's not important. The 100% counter chance won't apply here because these rebels cannot be countered because of their, um, their ability. Uh, but the inability to be critically hit is very important. So I'm just ulting here just to keep my, um, myself alive more than anything. Because I imagine these guys will probably do decent damage. Luckily, the dots themselves don't really do anything to me. I'm going to get that attack up. We should have another Whirlwind now. Um, I want to leave Biggs alive, simply because Biggs generates TM for himself. And based on Ray's leadership, anytime the enemy team gains turn meter, it's actually feeding into my mastery, so I'm going to be doing more damage. So I'm going to basic him just to trigger that TM gain. That's going to increase my mastery. So if we have a look over here... You see this mastery increase? That's going to be increasing her damage, her crit damage, her crit chance. So I'm just going to keep attacking him. He dodged, unfortunately, thanks to the evasion up. Basic attack him. He dodged again. That's just some bullshit right there. You see how she can't revive? Because we will win two of those characters. It kind of keeps this very much under control. There we go. He got the bonus TM there. Uh, again, I don't need to worry about ulting right now. Because, look at us, we're absolutely fine right now. That's protection recovery from the triple stacks of, um, well actually it's only a two stack of the Beskar armor from Armourer, is making sure that we just do not die. We just do not die. Okay, at this point I feel like we can probably do another um, lifeblood just to bring down our health, increase our max protection which will get recovered by the Beskar armor uh, and then we can whirlwind Bistan out here. Fantastic. At this point, we could probably just put it on auto, to be honest, guys. We can only really attack Biggs, and um, he's just going to be increasing our mastery the entire time. And they ca you can see they can't kill us. So our offense will be going up every single time these guys are gaining bonus TM, which is every single time I'm doing a basic, or every time I crit that Biggs. So it should be just a matter of time now. And you can see she can't revive. She doesn't have the, they don't have the DPS to actually take me out. Ray's AI is really dumb. There's no need for us to be ulting like that. Uh, there's no need for us to be doing the, um, the lifeblood either. I should just put this on auto basic and let them go ham. Yeah, let's just do it manually. Because otherwise the AI might do stupid things eternally and not let us kill. If this team had Hoth Rebel Scout, we would generate so much um, mastery so quickly, it would be hilarious. No need for us to ult. They don't have the DPS to chew through our bonus protection. That's from our own lifeblood being recovered by the Beskar armor. Okay, so that looks like we've gone above the 70% threshold for health, so I should be able to just whirlwind Biggs out of here. Great. GG easy. If you have Ray, put her in the leadership, that will get you the Beskar armor feat. Uh, sorry, the um, Mandalorian feat. So that's that one done. Easy peasy. So that's all of our feats, but really guys, I want to look into how can we get this feat without the use of a GL. This might take a few attempts, so you'll have to bear with me. Okay. So first and foremost, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a Mandalorian leadership. And I'm thinking, just because of the dots, I'm thinking that Malak might be a good shout here. He'll be able to taunt long enough, hopefully, and with the health drain, be able to revive himself. 
Um, Django lead, if we land the burning, it means they won't gain any TM, which is great. And then I'm gonna focus on Wedge Antilles. I think because he's the squishiest. I do wanna pass around the Tenacity down. There's the extra unit. Okay, hopefully they don't kill Beskar Mando again, because I would actually quite like for him to, maybe if we get the contract off with Django, we'd be able to do some good stuff. I wanna try and get that triple stack. We want to be able to avoid the crit on um, on Malak, really. If we can keep her alive, no such luck. There goes that, there goes that, there goes that. Okay, I don't think this is gonna work, but let's keep on trying. Let's just see how we get on. Yeah, we definitely need that armor. Okay, so proof of concept. Not good at the start. I think with good RNG, what we can do is we can get the armorer to stay alive to land that triple stack. I think we do need to make sure that we do not get... Uh, we, ha we have to get the triple stack because I don't think Malak will survive if he doesn't have that crit hit immunity. I know that will also stop them... Um, stop Malak from taunting. Let's just retreat. That will stop Malak from taunting. Um... But I think by the end it should be okay. What we're really looking for here is to just try and get... Try to get Malak to triple drain, obviously. He'll be able to inflict heal immunity, which would be great. Um, and then also we would look to... Maybe I should actually use the shock there. Maybe I should use the shock. If we can get the contract triggered on Django Fett, all the better. Because then we might be able to even disintegrate with... Uh, Beskar Armor Mando. I think it's unlikely, just because of stuff like that. Uh, let's drain power. Get the shock. All these other guys being feared is quite handy, to be honest. Drain pow. Look at all this, st all these stacks. Look at all those bonus attacks, though. Jesus, enough bonus attacks. Wow. Okay. This I was not expecting. Well, guys. <laughs> Apparently, Malak can do it on his own. So if you can actually survive long enough, you don't even need the Beskar armor. If you can survive long enough, they'll build up the dots on their team quickly enough so that they just die. And because of all the fear, they'll be missing a lot of turns. So if they focus down your Malak, just get him nice and tanky, and it's completely possible. Okay guys, so there you have it. You can actually do it with Malak in your team. Obviously if you've got GLs, do use them, it'll be a lot easier. SLKR in particular will find this one a breeze, uh, simply because he won't be able to take damage from those dots. Um, but if you do have Malak, mine's only at R5, not particularly well modded, 283 speed, not fast, only about 210,000 effective hit points, so not particularly healthy either. Tenacity and potency is nothing special. Um, it probably is pretty RNG, guys. You're probably going to have to do it a couple of times to get it to stick. But if your Mandos are as rubbish as mine are, then you got to do what you got to do. Make use of the tools that you have available to you. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you. Please, please do your subscribe guy a favor. Hit that like button, pretty please. It really helps me out. And if you do want to subscribe to the channel, I will be eternally in your uh, debt. So thank you so much. And you know, as they say, guys, until the next video, peace out. Just giving a quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And without your support, I wouldn't be doing this today. Thanks so much.